Bhagavad Gita, text 2.11 The Lord of Sri said, While speaking learned words, you lament for those not worthy of lamentation. The wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. In Paramatma Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami points out the parallelism between the verse and Krishna's concluding verse in chapter 18, Bhagavad Gita 1866. These two verses mark the beginning and end of Krishna's instructions to Arjuna, and thus one can surmise the essence of the entire text from them. In both verses, Krishna instructs, don't lament, don't worry. Mental energy expended on worrying would be better spent in remembering Bhagavan, our maintainer and protector and the perfect object of love. One may question why remorse for the loss of loved ones is not deemed appropriate, for such behavior is seen even in great souls. Krishna anticipates that Arjuna might argue in this direction in the face of the strong possibility that his dear ones will depart, and he says they should not be lamented for. Knowledgeable persons, Pandita, know that the departed have merely gone elsewhere, as they do even in embodied life. Although great persons are seen to lament at times, this is merely the expression of their manifest prarapta karma exhausting itself, while they themselves know better and remain situated in knowledge of the nature of the self. The manifest karma of great souls expires without diminishing their greatness. Although lamentation may be unavoidable, great souls teach us to pass through it without identifying with it. When we witness the passing of our good and bad karma, Without reacting to it, we progress in spiritual life. In this verse, spiritual education begins appropriately with the first letter in the Sanskrit alphabet, A Ashodhyan, requiring Krishna to contract his smile in pronouncing it as he sobers to explain the ABCs of spiritual life. He tells Arjuna that he should not lament for the gross or subtle body, as they have no life or permanence, nor should he lament for the soul, which, although worthy of affection, does not die. Krishna will refute Arjuna's arguments from the religious scriptures, Dharma Shastra, by citing scripture dealing with experimental spiritual life, Gyan Shastra, the Upanishads. Thus, after first dismissing Arjuna's questions, Krishna brings the discussion to a higher level in the next 19 verses, after which he will discuss and actually address Arjuna's socio-religious concerns. <laughs>